So HCG, um, it is used alongside TRT. It's also used as a monotherapy sometimes. We know it's used for fertility, pre-IVF and things like that. Um, but if you want to know how best potentially to use it for monotherapy, keep watching. So we're back and we are discussing HCG. So HCG is used obviously with TRT alongside it with some men. Um, it's used for monotherapy. Um, uh, in my experience and what we see in the clinics, HCG tends to be, although there's a lot of people preaching that it's a must or not, I, have, I and we have found that usually dosage and things like that it can be personal in terms of how it makes you feel. You might need to try different things. Some guys don't get on with it. Some guys, I know like Nelson, he mentions it, it massively improves sex drive and libido. But um, and we know there's certain levels that show in the evidence for fertility maintenance. But we've got Nelson Virgil and, and George, Dr. George Tuliatos here today. So we're just going to discuss this and see what you guys think. So dosage wise for monotherapy, is there something that's generally the, the general consensus on using it as a monotherapy in men, HCG? Monotherapy is tricky. Monotherapy, uh, and I had um, one of my best friends that is actually a scientist. He, he's used it as monotherapy for a long time. Uh, for fertility mostly, and uh, he's used uh, 1,500 IUs three times a week for a long time. He hasn't desensitized or anything, which is good. But, um, and, and the thing that doctors don't understand is it is, actually he's an LH mimicker, but on blood work, it doesn't show as LH, obviously. LH is suppressed. Yes. Zero on HCG monotherapy. So doctors are like, well, I'm giving you HCG, your LH is zero. Are you actually taking it? When in fact, this it suppresses LH, but it's doing exactly. the job. LH. Because it, it suppresses GnRH, it's synthetic yeah. GnRH, so it suppresses. It's a loop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask one other question uh, to mm -hmm. Nelson or George, is because in the past, you know, HCG was denied to me by doctors in the past because they they claimed it would create a desensitization of the Leydig cells. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe it's it's dose dependent. If you abuse like in PCT protocols, you know, in order to restart HPG after steroid abuse. There might be a higher chance of desensitization, but with with small and frequent doses up to a thousand per week, there's no chance of it. And Chrysler also was an advocate of that. Okay, that'd be good for I don't know, ten years now. And the best way to find out if something works is to forget about doing it. That's the best. That's the only in my thirty some years I've learned the most valuable information when I stop doing something. So I've seen guys doing really well in monotherapy. It's not, it's, it's two issues. It's cost. It's more expensive than doing testosterone replacement. Although, you know, we can say the same thing about combining two. It's a cost issue. And it's also, uh, I think the long-term, I've never seen anybody, only one person that I know, but it doesn't mean anything. That is a long-term feeling sexual enough. So I, I have no, a lot of guys are doing monotherapy. Um, I would say 250 I use every day without testosterone. But I have not heard from those guys on Excel mail again for follow-up. So it's not common. For fertility, it doesn't really work that well as a monotherapy. Uh, it can work for certain younger guys, but usually you have to bring FSH in, you know? HMG. Or, yeah, so I think there's a loop. The marriage of testosterone and HCG makes a lot of sense. But HCG alone or testosterone alone to me don't, don't make that much sense. Because there are things that those two synergistically, uh, not only you can save money on the dose, but also get more benefits. HCG alone, will eventually you have LH, LH suppression, FSH suppression. You, I, the data I've seen on, there's hardly any papers on HCG monotherapy that actually are great. It's always FSH. They, most people have to bring FSH later on. So, I think the guys, the 33% of guys that did not respond to Lipschultz um, protocol are the, the guys that end up on FSH and, and HCG for fertility. And a lot of, some of them on Excel may have reported, hey guys, finally I got my girl pregnant after trying TRT and HCG that didn't work and now on FSH. 
But FSH is also an expensive, expensive. So we'll have to see data, but there's a lot of speculations. I was able to triple my sperm count from 20 million to 60 million and froze it with continuous use of uh, HEG in three years in a row. So we've covered some good topics there on HCG. So that was a potential dosage for monotherapy and, and views on monotherapy. So thanks for, for joining us guys today. Um, it's been really helpful. And if you guys like these videos, please like, subscribe, uh, ring the notification bell and comment underneath if you've got questions or, or you'd like to, uh, uh, to get involved. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon.